In this tutorial, I'm going to teach you how you can make this satisfying animation in Blender. As always, it's going to be uh, quick and easy, so uh, let's get started. Okay, so let's start off by pressing X to delete, and then we can press Shift A and add a uh, circle curve. And then next, we're going to duplicate this uh, circle curve, so press Shift D, then Y, and then select the uh, curve and press R, Y, then 90, and then press S to scale. And then we can go into the curve settings and add the other curve as the geometry so that we can get some volume for the curve. So under object, select Bezier curve and then select the other curve and then press S to scale. And then we can scale the thickness of the circle. And then next we can convert the circle into a mesh. So select the circle, go to object, convert and then mesh. And then let's save before we continue. So save as, and then you can save it wherever you want on the computer, give it a name, and then press enter to save. And then next, I'm going to add a uh, subdivision surface modifier to increase the number of vertices, and then apply the modifier, and then I'm going to add some smooth shading as well. And then press number three and number five to go to the side view, tab for edit mode. And we can go into wireframe view, and then press C to circle select and use the mouse wheel to increase the radius. I'm only going to delete this part, press X to delete and vertices. And then hold in Alt to select the edge loop and then press S, Y, then zero to flatten it out on the Y axis and then press F to fill. And then we also need to press N and set the mean value to one that way, this face will stay flat when we add another subdivision surface modifier. And then we can do the same for the other edge loop. So press uh, S, Y, then zero. And then press F to fill. And then press tab to go back to object mode. And then you can see the smooth shading. So we need to go into the object data properties and uh, then go into normals and enable auto smooth. And then next, we can add another subdivision surface modifier to even further increase the uh, number of vertices so that it's even smoother for the final animation. And then next, we can add a uh, cylinder. So press Shift A, and then cylinder, then press S to scale, and then tab for edit mode, go to face select, Hold in shift and select both faces and set the increase value to 1 so that um, the uh, faces stay flat on each side while the rest gets uh, smoother. And press G, then set to grab it on the Z axis. And then S, then set to scale it on the Z axis. And then press S, then shift set to scale it only on the X and Y axis. And then next, I'm going to press S then set to a skeleton set axis and then we can duplicate the cylinder so press shift D then set and then press S then shift set to scale it on the X and Y axis and uh, then we can press S then shift set and then go into edit mode and I'm going to grab the top face on the uh, set axis okay so once you like the scale we can uh, go to the uh, next step of the tutorial, which is to create the thing that uh, goes through the uh, circle. So uh, let's duplicate the cylinder. So Shift D, then Set. And then I'm going to move the object to the uh, 3D cursor so that it's in the middle. Then press R, Y, then 90, and then S and Shift X to scale it only on the Y and the Z axis. Okay, and when we take a close look, we can see that we still need some additional subdivisions. So I'm going to set it a bit higher. And then we can uh, add another cylinder. So press Shift D to duplicate the cylinder and then set to move the duplication on the set axis. Press S to scale it down. And then press S 
then shift set to scale it only on the x and y axis. And make sure that it's not thicker than the cylinder it's connected to. And then I'm going to duplicate the cylinder once again, so press shift D to duplicate, then R, X, the 90. And then we're going to move it to the middle. So let's go to object and then set origin to geometry so that it's in the middle. Then we'll shift S and move the cursor to the other cylinder. And then we'll shift S and uh, move the selected to the 3D cursor. Okay, and then we can press S, then shift Y to make it thicker, and then S, then Y to scale it on the Y axis. Okay, and we're going to control the animation with uh, this cylinder. And then next, we can uh, create another save. So press Control, Shift S to create a new save. And then I'm going to scale this one a bit on the x-axis and this one a bit on the x and y-axis. And then next I'm going to set these two cylinders parent to the cylinder at the bottom. And then press Ctrl P. And then we can do the same for the uh, circle. And then press Ctrl P to set them parent to the circle. Okay. And then we can animate it, so press I to keyframe the rotation of the circle. And then we can go to the last frame, which is frame 240. And I'm going to set the rotation to uh, 1440 for now. And then press I to keyframe the rotation. And then press T in the timeline and set the keyframe interpolation to linear so that the speed is constant. Right now, I think it's a bit too fast. So I'm going to go to the last frame and then delete the keyframe and replace it with uh, 720. And I think that looks okay. And then we need to uh, rotate the uh, cylinder at the bottom as well, which controls the two other cylinders. So press I to keyframe the rotation at frame 1. And then we can set the Y rotation to uh, 720 so that it matches the rotation of the circle and then press I to keyframe. Then press T in the timeline so that the uh, keyframe interpolation is linear so that we have constant speed. And then we can save one more time by pressing Control shift s Okay, so now that we have the uh, basic animation, we're going to add the uh, second ring at the bottom. So we first need to make sure that the uh, cylinder is rotated 180 degrees, so that we have a reference for the ring. And we're going to duplicate it. And then we select the ring and the cylinders above. And then you press Shift D to uh, duplicate. And then press R, Y, then 180 to uh, rotate it 180 degrees on the Y axis. And then press G, then set to grab it on the Z axis. And then make sure it fits properly by pressing numpad 3. And then next, we need to reset the uh, keyframes or clear the keyframes for the circle. So right click and uh, clear keyframes. And then we can go back to the uh, first frame. And then press I to keyframe. And then go to the last frame. And we can set it to uh, 720 degrees. And then press I to keyframe. And press T to set the animation type to linear. And as you can see, it works. So uh, the next step is to save 
and then we're going to copy the uh, rotation objects. So uh, let's go back to the first frame. And then we can just mirror the uh, object on the uh, Y axis. And then do the same for the cylinder. And we use the uh, cylinder in the middle as the mirror object. And as you can see, it now works correctly. If you want to, you can also uh, set the uh, rotation of the circle to be the opposite of the one above. So uh, to minus 720, so that they go in opposite directions. Okay, so now the animation is done. And uh, let's just save before we continue on with the tutorial. Click on the plus sign and then save. And then we can set up the camera. So press Control Alt Numpad Zero to uh, set the camera to the current view, and then we can lock the camera to view as well. And then make sure to select the camera, go into the camera settings, and increase the end value so that we increase the range of the camera. And then for the resolution, we can set it to uh, maybe a thousand times two thousand, or we can just uh, add a uh, square aspect ratio. Okay, and then the next step of the tutorial is to set up the lighting and the materials. So let's just save one more time before we continue. Click on the plus sign and save. And then I'm going to add a background image. You will find a link to the background image in the description. It's completely free. And then when we go into render view, you can see the background image. And then I'm going to press Shift A and add a sum. And set the strength to 5. And then press R to rotate the sum. And then I'm going to make the background transparent. Because we don't want to see the uh, background image in the final render. Then next, I'm going to increase the number of samples to increase the quality of the render, double the resolution, and then decrease the uh, compression a bit. Okay, and then we need to select a folder for the final animation. We're going to render these as PNGs, and then you can convert them into uh, an MP4 later. I have a tutorial on that on my channel. You just uh, search PNG to MP4 on uh, YouTube. Okay, and then I'm going to uh, add some materials. I'm just going to use the Extreme PBR add-on to add the materials. For those of you who do not have this add-on, I have a uh, free tutorial for you guys where you can learn how to uh, add the materials manually. So uh, just check out this tutorial and you can very easily add the materials yourself in just uh, three minutes. Okay, so now we're pretty much done. So uh, let's start the rendering. And uh, that's it for this tutorial. Keep in mind that the rendering will take a few hours and uh, I hope you like the results.